What's going on everybody? Brandon today here from Gears, and we're trying something new, and that is gonna be a kind of a review interview, uh, an interview, how about that? And today joining me with that is somebody that if you've watched this channel before, you almost certainly know about, and that is Mr. Aaron Gerrard. Aaron, how are you, sir? What up? I'm well, sir, how are you? Good, Aaron's coming to us today from the big VA beach. That is Southeast Virginia, it's Virginia Beach. Check it out. If you've ever been there, by the way, leave us a comment. Tell us if you've ever run there, and if you have, what's a favorite spot that you'd like to go run, or hike, or bike, or just kind of generally get into mayhem. Today, the shoe that we're gonna be taking a look at, Aaron, is... The Ultra Olympus version five. Woo! Ultra Olympus. It's it's truly the mount, the pinnacle. It's where the gods live. You, you know, <laughs> right. and this this shoe tries to deliver on that. Does it? Okay. So the the whole point of these guys, the reason that we're recording this in this format, and we're going to be doing more of these, is because in the past, if Aaron has reviewed a shoe, and I am not the person that has the shoe here in Colorado with me and Gearist HQ. Aaron would then say, hey, here's what I think, and I would deliver the review to you guys, sans shoe in my hand. Well, we're trying to get around that, and also at the same time trying to save a boatload of money and shipping costs, so that is why this is happening, so you guys can actually hear from the horse's mouth, no offense, Aaron, exactly what Aaron <laughs> thought of this shoe. So, out of the gate, shoe number four, five of the uh, Olympus. Uh, what are your kind of like, what, what is the shoe trying to do? Who's it for? What's it trying, what's the problem that it is solving? So this shoe, um, as you can see, it's the, the Olympus 5, is a maximal cushion shoe, um, high stack height. Um, it's the everyday hiker, or for me, a uh, long run trail shoe that can go any distance on any terrain. Great, so, and have you run in previous versions of that shoe? I have not. Okay, okay. But in reading, I, I know for a fact that you read other reviews of previous Olympus models. What, uh, leading into number five, did other people, and, and you don't have to name names, but like what did other people think of those previous shoes? Was it was it something that kind of fit the bill for that go anywhere, do anything shoe, hiker, hiker, biker, <laughs> runner, whatever it is? What did they, uh, what did they think of those? Yeah, so the, you know, the comments, the feedback that I've read or I've heard or I've, you know, asked people of previous versions of the, the Olympus 5, is, you know, it's a, that, again, that shoe that you can go hiking with for, you know, multi-hour days, um, but also those long runs. So I need, if, if you're a person that needs that extra cushion, um, you, you want a little more stability, things like that, this is that shoe that kind of hits all those marks while giving that person, you know, the grip, the, the stability, the comfort of, of a shoe that has maximal cushion. Cool. So before we get into talking about the outsole and the general rundown like we do of our running shoe reviews, what is the stack height? I mean, you've mentioned it a few times now. Uh, what is the stack height in the heel and the forefoot? Um, so it's an ultra, so it's zero drop. So there's, it's, it's the same for both. Um, Somewhere between that 33 and 36, there are different, uh, differing opinions. I don't have the, the micrometer or anything to measure it. So I'm gonna go somewhere in that 33, 36 millimeter, but it's a zero drop shoe. So I guess depending on the size or, or the, you know, the, where you get the shoe, I, yeah. I think maybe it might be slightly different, but it's in that, that higher maximal range around 35, 36 millimeters. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, and uh, what is the weight? So you're size 13, right? I am a size 13. Um, for me, the weight was roughly around here. I've got a scale. Oh, there you um, go. Real time measurement. Look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, for my my size 13 in ounces comes in at 13.3 ounces. So for for size 13, like max more maximal shoe. That's that's really not bad. I mean, it's not lightweight, but. It's not lightweight. Um, it's not the lightest shoe I own. It's definitely not the heaviest shoe I own. Um, but I, th I think the what you get out of the shoe and the way the shoe feels, you don't necessarily feel it being heavy. Right. Right. Okay. Awesome. So let's get kind of into the the normal sections that we take care of. And the first one of those is the outsole. How is the outsole? What what type of rubber is on the outsole? So we've got the Vibram Mega Grip outsole. Boom. Um, if you can see it, it's. Uh, we got like four, four and a half millimeter lugs on the outside. Uh, 
super grippy. That Vibram grip is, you know, for me, top tier. Yeah. I think there's only maybe one or two other uh, rubbers out there that can compete with, with the Vibram. I love it. It's super sticky. Uh, the natural foot shape of the shoe uh, provides uh, lots of uh, ground stability. Yep. So, you you know, you, you don't feel like you're going to tip over or anything. Um, there's a, if you can see here, this, this medium gray is exposed EVA. Okay. While it's still EVA, um, it's, it may be the only thing that's kind of rubbed off a little bit. Uh, the, the Vibram grip has been super sticky and super durable. Um, and, and you know, even, even this stuff is, is barely gotten anywhere. Yeah. So is there a, a particular type of terrain that you would see that being better for, or I guess, not necessarily terrain, but like uh, ground, it, it better better on PD, better on dirt, rock, what have you. Is there something better that you would see that at over one another, or is it just kind of utility across all surfaces? Uh, I would say it's it's, it's very uh, versatile. Um, you could you could run with it anywhere. I will say it's it's loud on concrete and pavement. You kind of get that like that whack whack okay. whack feel when you're running on the pavement. Yep. Um, for anybody in the the you know Virginia Beach area who's run First Landing State Park, um, Long Creek Trail to be uh, more specific, um, there are there's PD areas, there's rooty areas, there's sandy areas, there's hard packed areas, um, even even some gravel areas. I, I ran almost 20 miles in this on Monday and or excuse me on Sunday and it was beautiful, awesome, uh, very very grippy, very you know never lost traction, never lost footing. Uh, when it comes to the outsole, uh, one of my favorite all-time outsoles. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, so durability being good, all of that stuff. As we move into talking about the midsole, and this is something that I'm curious about. So, well, before I ask that question, what is the midsole made of? So this midsole is, oh, I just had it. Hold on. We have the answers, everybody. Balanced cushioning uh, midsole. So it is... Uh, it's a, I don't know what kind of foam it is. I'm going to go with EVA probably. I mean, certainly. Yeah. I mean, super soft, but I want to say soft, but firm. So there's some, some, some snap back to it, but it's, it's soft enough to where you're feeling like you're in a nice cushy shoe. You're not getting, you're not in something like, uh, um, you know, some super condensed foam. Yep. It's, it's, it's got some, some squish to it. But it sounds like, so then it sounds like it almost is that it starts as a nice cush, but it compresses to a firm foot base pretty quickly within that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, nice. So if you can see, I don't know if you can see, there's some grooves in here yep. and those grooves go up into the foam. Um, there's some lateral um, and some, some or sorry, I guess some lateral and some vertical grooves that give enough flex to the shoe that you don't necessarily lose all the ground feel that you would in a super maximal shoe. And it's soft enough to where it's it's nice, um, flexible enough to to handle any terrain, um, but enough cushion to to support your you know your your body under the shoe. Yeah, I've, I've certainly got some questions about that as we get into the ride section in a moment. But before we do that, with regard to the midsole, um, do you think that somebody that's going to go well, hey, I'm somebody who likes a lot of cush, I want this shoe, but I still want something that can adapt to speed workouts, such as speed workouts are available on trails. I mean, that's most people are going to do speed on a road. Does this, is it capable of doing speedier stuff? And by speed being relative, let's keep in mind. <laughs> um, I think for the right person, yeah. perhaps. Um, for me, I wouldn't use this shoe in a, on, on a tempo day or a faster trail run. Um, there's almost too much midsole and outsole to yeah. really get going fast. Um, now, turning over like if you wanted to run a quick 100 yards down the trail you know there's you know you get spooked and you you got to go you, it'll go sure by all means um not something i would personally use uh, on a speed day there's a lot of it, it's a beefy shoe yep. um for a reason um and that uh, for me that reason is not a, a speed workout got it Okay, so as we get kind of leave the, the midsole area, which again, we're probably gonna revisit in the ride section, but talking about the upper. Now, uh, Ultra is very well known for their foot-shaped, I think they even trademarked the word foot-shaped, I'm not quite sure how that works, but um, very foot-shaped shoe. And I mean, like, 
I am well known, well, I'm well known in circles, my circles being me, for bitching about how uh, it's pretty frequently that the pinky toe side of a shoe seldom has enough foot shape, but I will also say that a very early iteration of Ultra that I ran in, I don't wanna say very early, but probably 2013-ish, was actually kind of swimmy, um, and, it, and it kind of got to that place. We can talk about that more in the, I guess, the fit section, but relative to the foot shape, how is the upper constructed? What is it made of? It Does it maintain that foot shape that it purports to have for four now? Yeah, so this is what Ultra is now calling their uh, original foot shape. Mm. So they have like a wide, a narrow, and, and the original. This is the original, and I think it fits right in that, or, I want to, you know, I don't, I hate to be redundant, but the, the original idea of what Ultra was going for. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice natural toe box, uh, plenty of splay, but not too much to where, um, you, again, it feels swimmy or you've got extra, extra in the, in that forefoot. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was fantastic. Um, I, I have run in the, the narrow, I, I want to say it's the narrow version, um, uh, not of this shoe, but of another shoe. And I, I very much appreciated it um, because it was a, a faster shoe. Mm. Um, something I wanted to hug my, you know, my, my midfoot, my, the top of my foot and my, my toes a little bit more. Mm. Um, in fact, the, the, the Mont Blanc, which I, I run the, uh, ran Leadville in last year, I used, used um, and it's a narrower foot shape and I, 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 I liked it. I do like the original. I think the the wider version may be a little swimmy yep. if, if it were this shoe. Um, this shoe uses, um, there's an engineered mesh. Um, you can see up here, uh, there, there's the, uh, this tongue is fully gusseted. Um, it's padded nicely. Um, you get a nice snug kind of locked down feel with it. Um, and this version of the Ultra, they've actually, reinforce the heel if you can see the the midsole comes up out of it they've got a nice heel counter here um plenty of padding in the shoe around the collar mm -hmm. so you can really get that locked down heel for anybody who has you know has to use a you know a heel lock lace or anything like that this model does a great job of reinforcing that heel um i will say the the upper is a little hot on hot days. Okay. Um, went through a few puddles. It drained fairly well. Not the best draining shoe again I've, I've ever had, but it drained really well. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of fabric up here. There's a lot of material. Um, while it's super protective, and I would have no issues running anywhere with this shoe, um, it does get hot. So if you got if you get swampy feet, and especially once it gets you know north of 65, 70 degrees, um, you might want to find a puddle. Because because these things get so get hot. Yeah, yeah. Do the are there are there plenty of laces? Are the laces too short? I mean, you have a pretty average foot for a size thirteen. I mean, yeah. How yeah, I mean, again, average foot shape, um, average arch, average everything for the most part. Um, there is, I will say, when it's tied, when I tied it, how I liked it on my foot, there was enough to do a double knot, but it's not needed. Got it. Um, I did a single knot on yesterday's long run. Um, there was no floppy laces. It was a nice tight little bow at the top. Um, for me, it was plenty. In fact, it was probably the ideal length of lace. Um, cause sometimes you get some that you got to tuck in yep. because they're so long or you're, you know, you're trying to weave them through, through the lace. Um, and then there's some that you've got to exchange the laces because, uh, you know, there's not enough, but this, this was ideal for me. No, no added lace. Awesome. And is there, I thought I saw right on the heel. Is there a gator attachment on the back there? Yeah. So they, they do their, so ultra has a cool, um, all their trail shoes come with, they've got a Velcro here for the gator attachment and the nice little hook at the end of the, uh, you know, the, the lace pattern here to, to you know, for a gator. Awesome. I've never worn a gator, but, um, I know people that do, and they, they love the, the and a and a whopper of a heel pull, heel tab pull there. <laughs> yeah, man. So again, like there's there's probably like a couple of grams or you know a fractional of an ounce you can move from this. But to be honest, like it was, it's nice, it's soft. Um, I've had no issues. I had no issues with it. It actually, it's uh, it's very soft. Uh, cushiony fabric uh -huh. so going up your achilles it's actually kind of nice oh nice 
Yeah, yeah, it, it was very comfortable. I thought the same thing when I, I looked at it. I'm like, wow, this thing is sticking straight up and you know, <laughs> I can see through it. Um, but zero issues. I mean, yeah. I think if they wanted to shave some weight, you could probably cut it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but again, what you're going to save in that weight isn't going to change much or anything. It does, though. Like, I mean, we, we so we've talked about all the construction at this point. It does seem that maybe there if you were to kind of cut down on the beefiness or reimagine some pieces of the upper more broadly not just the heel pull that there's probably an ounce plus of material that whether it need the word need is a little bit relative so whether it needs to be there or not is again relative could probably be lost if needs be so i i, I couldn't agree more yeah. um you know some of the added um you know overlays some of the added fabric. Um, but again, this I think this shoe was designed for the person who can go on a long run with them or you could hike up a mountain with these. And I don't oh, yeah. think, you know, I, I think this shoe is maybe more geared for that. Um, I wouldn't want to remove anything from this if I'm going to use this as like a hiker going up, you know, yeah. a, couple, a couple thousand feet, you know, on a... a, a leisurely pace like i think the the protection you get and the material that's on here is is purposeful mm -hmm. um and and geared for that now i think if you were to turn this into like a 100 mile ratio or 50 mile ratio yeah i think there's probably an ounce and a half of material you could probably remove from this mm -hmm. um but ultra has other shoes in its lines for that got it got it well yeah i mean it, that is interesting that's a great point that it's more if you're using it as a more utility shoe, then having that is certainly not a detractor. Yeah. So uh, looking at the fit, now we, we talked actually quite a bit about the fit so far. How does it run in terms of size? Is it true size, big, large, or small? Yeah, I'm a 13. Um, I'm a 13 and I always buy a 13. Um, there's been one shoe company that I can't fit into a 13. Mm. Um, this is a shoe that you, if you're a 12, you're a 12. If you're a 13, you're a 13. Very true to size. Um, they now come in different widths. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a, if you've got a fat foot, you can get the wide. Um, if you've got a skinny foot, um, there are shoe models in Ultra that have that narrow uh, natural foot shape. So nice, and that's this, the, fits nice. Yeah, I mean that's one of those things that I'm I'm glad they made that adaptation because it is definitely one of those things where you go, wow, this is. It's great for a person looking for that foot shape, for a ton of splay and all that stuff. But it seemed that, as I mentioned in a very early model, it translated into more width than was necessary through the mid and rear foot. You know? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I think there are um, there are other brands of shoes out there that have you know that wider toe box yep. that I I've had the same feeling. I you know I've tried them on and they are very swimmy, very wide feeling. Mm -hmm. um, but this one is not, you know, this good. Ultra Olympus 5 is a very natural fitting 13 for me. Awesome. Love that. So in terms of the ride, so here, here's, this is my conundrum with a shoe like that because Ultra, it's, it's contradictory almost, right? And this is not a, I'm not, I'm not the guy that reviews this, this particular shoe. So let's all keep that in mind for a second. But the contradictory part to me, it goes on the one hand, you're trying to get back to a natural foot shape. Ultra was certainly a byproduct of the, the natural running movement, which came out of things like Newton and then Topo and then Vibram Five Fingers and all of those, basically the born to run era, right? So 2011, 12, right in there. And so those, and even earlier, those shoes were kind of a byproduct of that. And I love that personally. I mean, I make no secret of the fact that I have run many miles barefoot. I like a good ground feel, although I can adapt to something that has more stack to it. Does it, it, does it feel like a contradiction underfoot where it's trying to be natural, natural foot shape, zero drop, just like your foot is. Um, but then there's all this underfoot material or does it just kind of like, you're just like, well, it is what it is and it feels good and that's that? Uh, for me personally, um, I've put 75, 80 miles in this shoe. Um, there is something to it being as beefy as it is. Uh -huh. um, I like ground feel. Um, I can lose, depending on the shoe, I don't mind if I lose some. Uh, there's a lot of shoe here. The 
you know, my natural gait, my natural stride um, is all very complementary with this shoe. Mm -hmm. um, I like the way it runs, um, but you do with as much, you know, I mean, that's a lot of stack. Yeah. Um, you do lose some of that natural ground feel. You do lose. Now, while you can, you can like from where I live, you can still feel the roots um, and the bigger rocks and things like that. Um, when you get into the sand, um, you kind of just feel like you're running through sand. <laughs> um, you know, like it, it, you're, you're not going to get every tiny little itty bitty uh, feel of the ground. If you're someone who needs connectivity to the ground, you know, you want to feel everything, every kind of little undulation and movement in the ground. Uh, this is a lot of shoe for you, and I'm not sure it's something I would go with. Um, but you do have ground feel. Um, they do, they, you know, Ultra does a good job of being able to, while there's a lot of stack, you can still feel the ground. Nice. But it's not nearly as much as something as, uh, say, a Lone Peak, you know, from Ultra or the Mont Blanc from Ultra. Uh, you are going to lose some of that ground feel. Other than that, I think the ride of this thing is is spot on um, and something that I, I'm going to give a few more um, long run efforts in. Awesome. Awesome. So in terms of the overall ride, I mean, it sounds like you're a fan and I, I love things where there is that utility, where you can go on a hike, you can jump in the sand, you could go up Jockey's Ridge or something like that. I mean, to, can, try, just trying to find a big dune, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um for me like the the ride of this thing again is is very smooth um it's soft but snappy um i don't think i could do 100 miles in it because it's a lot of shoe uh -huh. um i don't think i would use it on a recovery run because again it's a lot of shoe um and it's not that's the overly soft like bondi from hoka kind of squishy um but it's a really, really good shoe for me. I'd say somewhere between like north of 12 miles and, and maybe under, say, 50. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say is it sounds like for a run, not for the utility purpose of hiking and all that stuff, but for a run, it sounds like there is a sweet spot for that. And anything longer, it's going to need, uh, ironically, less shoe, so you're not lifting the same amount of additional weight over and over. But on this end of things you might want something pop popular if it's a speedier run and things like that. So that's awesome. Yeah. 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 What's the price tag on that guy? Uh, I believe right now they're going, I think they're 180. Okay. Um, 179.99. Um, for what I think you can get out of the shoe as far as mileage. Yeah. While that for me, 180 is, is on the higher end. Mm -hmm. Um, I tend to try and find things, you know, under that 150 mark. Um, you know, with supply chain and everything, it kind of prices have gone up yep. over the last few years. Um, so where my, my price point at one point was like that 120, 125 mark, you know, now we're kind of sitting at that 150 mark. Um, this coming in a little higher than that, um, you're going to get $180 worth out of this shoe. You're going to get every bit out of the shoe. It's going to go 50, 100, 150 miles more than your standard shoe. There's a lot of shoe here. There's a lot of protection. It's extremely durable. I mean, I've seen, I mean, I've got 75 miles in it and other than a few dirt marks, there's zero wear and tear on this shoe, so. So, final question for you. Mm -hmm. We're, you're a dad, I'm a dad. When that shoe is retired, can you drink beer and cut grass in it? No, oh, hell yeah, okay. uh, 100%, Well, then, 100%. Then I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, this is a, like going to your kid's soccer game and it's, you know, yeah. you're going to a sporting event. You, you want to cut the grass, do yard work. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Like when these are, when you retire these from running, you've got months left in these shoes. There you go. Years left in these Still shoes. So cut the hell out of some grass. Love yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks. Thanks so much. That's fantastic. And guys, um, if you have any questions about this particular shoe, anything like that, you can always leave a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, please, by the way, don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe. You can follow Aaron on Instagram at, at Aaron with two R's. Garrod, two R's again, G-A-R-R-O-D. And wait, don't you have a set? You have a second that I'm missing gear specific Instagram. So I do. Um, at the beginning of the year, or I shouldn't say beginning, beginning of March, I started a uh, 
it's very new, but it's run underscore eat underscore gear. There you go. Um, and that is, there's, you know, there won't be my kids, there won't be my wife, there won't be any of the, the random stuff. Um, just gear. Just gear. Um, I, yep, just gear, just food, um, just running, just, just yeah. all things that you know we we kind of, you and I and and everyone else there out there kind of uh, That's right. enjoy. So if you guys if you guys want to we'll we'll also put Aaron's information uh, down in the comment section below. We or this description rather. We'd love to hear your comments. Have you run in this? Have you run in the other Olympuses, please? Olympi, please let us know. Um, and yeah, subscribe, like, follow, share, tell your friends, all that stuff. Aaron, thank you so much, man. Thanks, brother. See you guys later. Bye.